What's up everybody? Today I'm going to show you how to install and configure the iTheme Security WordPress plugin. So iTheme Security is one of the best plugins you could use to secure your website. It has a lot of features to protect your website from being hacked and attacked. Alright, so to get started, you're going to log into your dashboard. You're going to go to the plugin section, click on add new, and then you're going to go over here to the search plugins area, and you're going to type out iThemes Security. The first option is what we want. As you can see, it's active in over 800,000 plus installations, and it's very well rated. It's also recently updated, so you could just install now, and then you could just activate the plugin. Now, once it's installed and activated, you're going to be presented with two messages. The first one is to look at the security dashboard and to see what's new. The second one is to get a free API key for the brute force network protection. I'm going to show you all the settings directly, so I'm just going to X out of these for now. And then you have two locations that you could access the security settings. The first one is in the admin toolbar in the link titled security. And the second one is in the admin sidebar, also titled security. You could just click on one of these links. And when you first install the plugin and activate it and click on that link, it's going to present you the security check page. So basically, this is going to configure your website with the recommended settings that I think security thinks you should have. So you could just click on the secure site. And then make sure you have your correct email address in order to enable and activate the network brute force protection. I'm on my local server, so this will not work for me. Uh, but for you, you should be fine as long as you're using a production website. You'll get a check mark for everything that was done. And then you can just X out. The next one's going to be for the global settings. And if you take a quick look at this page real quick, you'll see the different panel settings that we could work with. These are the free options. And then the grayed out options are for the pro version. I do have the pro license and I have the license that enables me to install the pro version of iTheme security on my client's websites and on an unlimited amount of websites. And the best part is everyone gets the updates right in their dashboard. But in this tutorial, I'm just going to go over the free version. And in another video tutorial, I'll show you the pro version. All right, so we're going to go to global settings and configure settings. So I recommend you leave this box checked because this will enable iThemes to write to your wp-config.php file and your ht access file. Otherwise, you'll have to upload the configuration options to your web server. And that can be cumbersome if you don't want to deal with FTP programs. The next one is just for your notification email. You could have as many notification emails as you want. Just separate them by line. And then if your website's being attacked, you might get a lot of notifications in your email box. And that can clutter things up. So it's best to check this off. So that way you only get one email per day with a list of all the attacks that have taken place. The next one's for your backup delivery email. You can add as many emails as you want to separate them by line. Now the next three options I just leave to the default messages. This is for your host lockout message, your user lockout message, and your community lockout message. These notifications are fine. If you want to customize them, you can, and you can use HTML tags with that notification. Now this option is extremely important. You want to make sure this checkbox is checked, and this will enable the blacklist repeat offender. So if a person's attacking your website, if they've been locked out a certain amount of times, they will be placed into your banned user's blacklist. The next option is for the threshold. So by default, it's set to three, and that's a good amount. If an IP address has been attempting to access your website and has been locked out three times, it will be added to the banned user's blacklist. And then this is the look back period. So if they've attempted to access your website three times within seven days, then they will be added to that list. Now the lockout period is for 15 minutes. This is the recommended setting because if someone's trying to hack your website or attack your website, then within one hour, they will fail three times, be locked out, and then added to the banned users blacklist. Now what you want to do is also add your IP address to the whitelist. You can do that by clicking this button over here and it'll add your IP address to the whitelist. You also want to add your IP address to any other location that you're going to be accessing your website from. So let's say your office location, or if there's another place that you frequent, then you're going to want to add that IP address. Now just be careful with this because if there's somebody within that same IP address, then they will also be added to the whitelist as well because they're going to be on the same IP address. If you're in your house and you have your IP address, then you should be fine. Now to enable email lockout notifications, you just make sure this box is checked. And then iThemes can log data in multiple different ways. It can save it to your database, or it can save it to a file, or it could do both. The recommended setting for the vast majority of websites is the database only. 
and then you could choose how many days you want to keep the logs for. If you need to keep it for more, you just change this number to whatever number you need it to be. And then this is the path for the log files itself. If you want to allow iThemes to track plugin usage, you can enable it here. This option for disable file locking, it's recommended not to check this box. It can cause issues, so just leave it alone. The next one is to override proxy detection. So if you're not using a service like Varnish or Cloudflare, then you may want to enable this feature. But if you are using it, then you may want to disable the feature. The next option is to hide the security menu in the admin bar. So if you want to do that, you can check this box over here. I leave it unchecked because I think it's good to have access to it. Then the other one, the final setting on this page is to show error codes. It's good to leave this to the default value of no. You would only enable it when you're troubleshooting your website and if you're working with an iTheme security support person. If you make any changes here, make sure you save them and then we'll move on to the next section. It's the 404 detection. We'll enable that feature and then we'll configure the settings. I'm going to leave it set to the default values here, but pretty much if a person is trying to access too many pages that do not exist, then that can be a sign of an attack. So you will want to have this enabled. And these are the default settings. Five minutes for the check back period and then 20 errors for the threshold. These are what's whitelisted and these are the ignored files. Next is going to be the away mode. So this is a good setting to have if you know for a fact that you're not going to be accessing your website, let's say from 1 in the morning to 6 a.m. in the morning because you're asleep. You can enable this feature and your website will still be able to be viewed by people visiting your site, but the dashboard will be unaccessible. Now you do want to make sure that your server location and your time zone is synchronized. So be careful with that. And if you're the type of person that does log into your website at all times of the day and night, then you don't want to have this enabled. So I'm going to disable it for myself. And now we're going to work with the band users. We're going to configure the settings here. The only thing we're going to change, I'm going to check this box to enable the hackrepair.com's blacklist feature. Everything else is fine. And then you can just save the settings. And now for the local brute force protection, we're going to configure the settings here. And the only thing we're really going to change is to automatically ban the admin user. So if a person tries to log in five times per host and they fail, they'll be locked out. If a person or a user tries to log in 10 times and fails, they'll also be locked out. So if you make any changes, save them here. And now we're going to go to the database backups. We're going to configure the settings here. You can decide if you want to get a full database backup or not. You can check that box. And then the backup method, you can choose to get it emailed to you. Or you could save it locally. Or you can do both. Now this setting you want to make sure you configure properly because depending on the type of web server you have and the hosting plan that you have, this can end up being an unlimited amount of backup. So if you have a limited storage capacity, you may want to limit this to a certain amount. So you can choose 10 backups or you can choose 5 backups. If you set it to zero, all backups will be retained. And then you're going to want to make sure you have the zip database backups. This will make the file size smaller. Now if you want to exclude some tables, you can do that here. And these are the tables that don't need to be backed up. Now if you want to enable the scheduled database backups, you check this box here. And you can choose one day, three days, seven days. It really depends on how often you're blogging and how often you're making changes to your website. So play around with that setting to determine what makes sense for your website. If you make any changes, make sure to save them. And now we'll go to the file change detection. We'll enable that feature and then we'll configure the settings. I recommend you split file checking into chunks and this will ensure that you're not using too much server resources. It'll separate checking of the file changes throughout the day in seven chunks. Now if you want to exclude or include certain selected items, you can choose this option here. And then if we have it set to exclude, then over here, we can exclude any files or folders. These are the ignored file types. And then you're also going to get the email notifications and also the display notifications if any files have been changed on your website. So this is for the admin dashboard and this is for the email. If you don't want to get the notifications in your admin dashboard, you can uncheck this. Or if you don't want to get the email notifications, you can uncheck this. I just default to leaving them both checked. Save your changes. And now we'll go to file permissions. So this setting, when you load the file permissions, it'll let you know what your file permissions currently are and what they should be. So I'm on my local server, so I have it set up in this manner. But these are the recommended and suggested file permissions for your website. You can change that in your control panel. All right, so we'll close that out. The next one is to configure the settings for the brute force protection for the network. We already set this up in the security check. Make sure everything here is accurate. 
and then you could X out of it. You could also enable SSL support. So if you're using an SSL certificate, you can configure the settings here. I'm on my local server, so this will not work. But if you have an SSL certificate on your production website, you can enable support for it on the front end based on the content or the whole entire site. And you could also do it for the dashboard. So this is definitely recommended. You know, I did a video on SSL certificates and it's a Google ranking factor now. So it just makes sense to have support for it. I'm going to disable it because I'm on my local host. But for you, you should definitely get an SSL certificate and definitely use this feature. Now, strong password enforcement. This is basically saying the minimum role at which a user must choose a strong password. I think everybody should have a strong password, but you can choose just a contributor role, which means if a person's logging into your website, uh, they would need to have a strong password in order to use their account. It really depends on how you're working with your website. If you have contributors, authors, editors, or just an administrator, will determine how you set this up. If you make any changes, save the changes. Now for the system tweaks, we're going to enable this feature. We're going to configure the settings here. Now these can conflict with other plugins and themes, so be very careful with it. You want to do them one by one so that way you can identify if there's any issues. But if you want to protect your system files from being publicly accessible, you can check this box over here. I definitely recommend checking the disabled directory browsing. Now if you're not using the REST API, you could check this off. If you want to filter the suspicious query strings in the URL, you can check this box over here. Now the next one, you would need this to be checked for the non-English characters. If you're not using an English website, then you don't want to have this enabled. But if you are using an English website, you may want to have this feature configured. You could also enable the support filter long URL strings. Now hackers may try to inject information into your database by using very long URLs. So if you enable this feature, you can protect yourself from that. Now you may want to further protect your WP config file and your HC access file by clicking this option over here. And then if you want you could disable PHP uploads, PHP in plugins, and PHP in themes. Now these definitely can conflict with plugins and themes that may need these features but if you determine that they don't then you should definitely check these off. If you make any changes to your settings you can click on save settings. Now we're going to move on to the WordPress tweaks. Now these are good to have enabled as well but you want to be careful again because they might cause an issue with a plugin or your themes. So you can choose to disable support for the Windows Live Writer. You can also choose to remove the RSD, really simple discovery, reduce common spam, disable the file editor. So by default, in your appearance, you would see there's an editor link. We don't have it set here because we enabled this feature to disable it. And in the plugins would also be there as well. I'll uncheck it now and I'll show you when we save the settings, what happens. For the XML RPC, it's recommended that you disable that. And it's also recommended that you block multiple authentication attempts per XML RPC. Now for the REST API, it's re recommended that you have the restricted access. And then these options, this is for a safe version of jQuery. You could also disable the login errors, force users to choose a unique nickname, disable the user's author page if their post count is zero. And this is a great one to have over here to protect against tab napping. So just check it off. If you want to get more information on that, you can visit this article. So I'm going to save the settings here. And then once we refresh, we're going to go to the appearance and now you see you have the editor option over here. So this is dangerous because if a person has access to this, then they can make changes to your website right here. So I like to disable that. I'll go back to security, to settings, and then to WordPress tweaks and disable the file editor, save changes. And then when we refresh, you see that's now gone. So the next one is to configure the settings for your WordPress salts. So when you first create your website, in your WP config file, you're going to have some security salts. Those are unique to every WordPress website. Now, if you want to change them, you can. What that'll do is it will change your security salts and it'll log everybody out that's logged into your website. So you can check this box and then save your settings. So those are the free options that you have with iTheme Security. As you can see, iTheme Security provides you a lot of ways to protect your website. I definitely like it. I recommend it. You do have to spend some time playing around with the various settings because they may conflict with some plugins or themes that you have, but it's something that can definitely enhance the security profile of your website. Now, if you really want to go to the next level, definitely get the pro version. Or if I'm doing your website for you, I can install the pro version on your website. And then you have support for the more advanced features down here. All right, so now we can also take a look at the view log section. And then you can see the database backup executed. You can look for the details there. You can also see the files changes detected and see the details there. You can also clear the logs if you want. And you can go back to manage settings. 
All right, so that's the tour of the iTheme security plugin, how to install it and configure it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video where I demonstrated some of the good features that iTheme security provides and definitely use the plugin. It does a really good job of protecting your website. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe because in the upcoming videos, I'll show you more ways to secure your website and to optimize your website for peak performance. And I'll do another video on the pro version of iTheme security and the different features that that provides. All right, again, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time. Take care.